All right, hello and welcome to Asteroids tutorial number 14. We are flying along here quite literally. What we want to do today is create the thing you have all been waiting for. Let's create a laser gun for our spaceship to be able to shoot the asteroids. So to start off, I'm going to choose a sprite. Um, I could um, find any old laser beam or something like that, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to paint one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, and I'm going to make just a little red circle. I'm going to change my color to red right there, and I'm going to make just a circle. Now you see, I can make the circle any shape. If I hold down shift though, while I'm doing this, I can make it snap into a specific shape. I want this blue plus sign to line up with the little crosshairs right here. I'm going to get that right there. Now the problem is that is just way too big. So we're going to shrink this down a bit. There we go. That still even feels big at this point because you see that's the size of our spaceship. So let's make this even smaller. We'll zoom in a bit more. There we go. I've got a little red dot now. That looks pretty good. I like the looks of that. Um, you could create whatever you want for this though. Um, just, just know that it can be however you imagine it. Let's get into the coding. We'll come over to the code here. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a longer code. Um, we have some new things that we're going to look at. So the first off is we need to have that little red dot. We're not going to actually use that dot, the original clone, as the, 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 or the original uh, sprite um, as the bullet. We're going to use something um, like a clone for that. So that way we can have as many of these on the screen as we want at any given time. Otherwise, you could only have one that shows up. So to do that, we need to right off the bat hide that little uh, clone or that little sprite right there, the little red dot or, or laser. Let's call it our laser right here. So when the green flag is clicked, we'll go to looks and we're going to go hide. The next thing we'll do in here is we're going to put in a forever loop and we want it to be able to create clones whenever we do something. In this case, if we press the space bar, for example, if we go to our sensing, here's a touching mouse pointer, key space press, there we go. So if the key space is pressed, then let's create a clone. We'll go to our control, create a clone of myself. There we are. And next, we want it to do something special here. Um, we want it to create the clone itself. So we need to tell it what to do once it starts as a clone. Uh, when it starts as a clone, right off the bat, we need to tell it it needs to show up. And then we need it to do a couple other things. We want it to, to um, let's say we had a straight line for a laser instead of a single bullet. That straight line might come out of the spaceship sideways or at a diagonal. We always want it to shoot straight though. So what we could do here is we can have it point in a specific direction when it creates itself as a clone. So I'll come over here to our motion blocks and there is a point in direction 90. I'm going to pull that in right now. However, we don't want it to point in 90. We want it to point in whatever direction the ship happens to be pointed in. But there's a button for that. So our line of code, it's under sensing. And it's a very, very odd looking one. It says backdrop number of stage. This little piece of code can be so many things. It has a lot of options down here. That's just for the stage. But look at what happens if I change stage to spaceship. Now, all the options change. And in this case, I want it to point in the direction of the spaceship. Whatever direction the spaceship's in, that's the way I want that thing to point. We also want that dot to show up wherever the spaceship is. And in order to do that, we need to set its X and Y location. So we're going to have it um, have a set X and a set Y. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to duplicate this here. And we're going to use this a few more times. But instead of direction of spaceship, we're going to use set X to X position of, state, of spaceship and what set Y to the Y position of the spaceship. Okay, at this point, we are looking like we could probably create something. There it is. 
oh, in fact, we if I hold down the space bar, I can just have uh, my spaceship create a whole bunch of them. But they're not exactly working like lasers, but they are originating from the spaceship, though. So that's a good sign. So unfortunately, <laughs> if you spam too many of those, you end up um, freezing Scratch. So right now, I'm going to hit Control-R, and I'm going to refresh my web page. It's unresponsive. See that? If you spam too many clones, it messes it up. <laughs> OK. To avoid that from happening, what we need to do is put a limit on when those can be created. So instead of just holding down the space bar and creating tons and tons and tons of laser beams, let's have um, our spaceship wait until the space bar is not pressed before it can create another one. So in other words, we have to press the space bar every time we want to shoot. So in that case, what we're going to do is use this control. We're going to wait until something happens. So we'll create a clone of ourselves, of the, of the laser beam, and then we're going to wait until something actually is not happening. We're going to wait until our space bar is not being pressed. So we'll come to our sensing, and the key space is pressed. And now when I come to this, I can go hit that green flag. Let's see how it works. There it is. I'm pressing the space bar down. I can press it a lot of times, but I can't just hold it down and spam a whole bunch now. OK, so problem solved. Well, OK, we still need to get these things to move, right? So um, there's a, a special set of code for this, because we only want them to move so far. And there's lots of ways we can do this. I'm going to show you one particular way to do this. Um, we are going to create a new variable. We'll hit Make Variable. And we are going to call this one Bullet or Laser Movement. Let's do Laser Movement. And we'll hit OK. And at this point, we can set. When I start as a clone, we can do this even before it shows. In fact, all these things can happen before it shows. We are going to do laser movement to 0 at the very beginning. After it shows, we want to repeat something. And it's not just repeat. We want to repeat until something happens. And I'll show you what we're doing with this. We want to use. Um, an OR statement here. And the operators will come in here, repeat until something OR something else happens. So uh, for this, if our bullet goes so far, the laser beam goes so far off into space, we'll have it like dissipate and lose energy. That way it doesn't just keep flying around the screen forever. So we could have it. Uh, repeat until the bullet movement gets to uh, above a certain number. So we could say, here's our something that's greater than something else. And let's go to our variables. And we'll go, um, or laser, uh, in this case, the, the laser movement. And let's see. Whoops. I lost my laser movement variable. Let's see. Let's make a variable. Oh, it already exists. Look at that. Uh, I'm not seeing it showing up, though. That's the weird thing. Oops, sorry about that. I figured out what was going on. I had to refresh my page there. It, it kind of glitched out. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our laser movement greater than, um, I'm going to say 55 for right now. Let's go with 55. I think that's a good number for it. We can always play test that later. So we're going to have this repeat until the laser movement is greater than 55, or if it's touching an asteroid. So we'll go touching mouse pointer, and we'll change that to the big asteroid. So as it's repeating, we want it to move. And I think a good speed for this one, for a laser, I'm going to have it move six steps. And as it's moving along, we want our variable of laser movement 
to get bigger and bigger. So we're going to have it change. Make sure it's not set, but change laser movement by one. Make sure you're on the right drop down here. So we'll have it change the laser movement by one. And let's see what happens. Let's test it out. We'll hit play. And there it goes. And you see that? It kept moving until it either goes too far or until it hits an asteroid. And that works for the clones and it works for the big one. Great. So we're going to need some more object collision for the laser beams running into the big asteroids. And there's something else. If the lasers are shot close to the edge, what you'll notice happens is that they stop at the edge. And they don't actually end up traversing to the opposite side. See that? So we want them to be able to go through that. You saw them kind of sliding across the top there. So just like we did with the asteroid and the spaceship, I'm going to go to the uh, small asteroid here. Remember this if x position is less than and then set x to. I'm going to duplicate that and then drag it over to our laser beam. And in here, let's see. Oh, whoops. It didn't go through. Let me get it one more time. I don't even have to duplicate. I can just click and drag it. Right here, I can move this over. And I'm going to put this right underneath there. And let's see if our laser beams can now go across the edges of the border. And sure enough, they can. There they go. OK. Now I think we're ready for some object collision with the laser beams. And we'll hit that in the next video.